I think for so many people in the family, especially obviously the men, there can be a temptation or an urge to marry someone who would fit the mold as opposed to somebody who you perhaps are destined to, to be with. The difference between making decisions with your head or your heart. And my mum certainly made most of her decisions, if not all of them, from her heart. So I remember a moment when I suddenly realized that my family was different. <laughs> um, no, I think it's just, I just think it's gradual. There's no point that we're all sat down in a classroom and my grandmother stands there with, you know, the long stick in her glass and then everyone knows and goes, right, so this is what it means to be in the royal family. All right, Chase, what do you got? This is a classic example of distancing language, and it's actually very well done. In this documentary about themselves, we're still hearing vague, hollow references to situations and to people that are like clouded in mystery. He's not talking about himself. He's not discussing how he felt or how that he felt this temptation or urge at all. He's suggesting that might be the case, but the language is so removed and filled with upward tones and vague language that it's bordering on lacking meaning. And when he's saying, I think it's just gradual, uh, there's no discussion of anything of substance again, only speaking to what isn't there and doesn't happen. So, again, empty, hollow, vague, uh, dare I say, a three-syllable word here on the behavior panel, platitudes are what we are filled with here. Greg, what do you think? Yeah, I think we're seeing the beginning of a story he's trying, going to try to tell us through this whole thing. And the beginning of that story is around what happened to his mother, the biggest event in his life. And I think, guys, there may be some arrested development. I'm not a psychologist, but there may be some arrested development. Here's the reason you're seeing him behave that way. Not confrontational, not likely to go and be aggressive, because there's a smile of recognition that his mother was not necessarily the swiftest, that she did some stupid things and followed her heart, didn't follow her brain. And you can see that smile of recognition. And do you see him blinking? I don't think that blink is stress. I think it's his processor working. As you would say, Chase, that's processor speed. And he's sitting there trying to think of what to say next. Then when you get in that second part, there's some pretty powerful body language there. You see that contempt in his face when he talks about his family, that intake breath, and then those exposed lower teeth and that jaw jut. That's pretty powerful body language about family. I think... We're probably going to see more of this, but he's got a message that he wants to deliver, whether whether it's a powerful message, whether it's done well or not, whether he's confrontational or not. Some of that, Chase, I'm going to assume is his very British upbringing, some of it his very royal upbringing and told you you do whatever you feel, however you want, don't show it, would be my guess that some of us there. But there's a lot, a lot of body language when he does that contempt, when he's talking about my family, when I found out my family was not normal. And then his lower teeth exposed and working that jaw all indicate to me that he's showing anger back to the family. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So uh, let me tell you what story I think this is. I think he feels it's a love story, a love narrative. I think it's actually a little bit of a tragedy. And so just to not put a psychology hat on, just leave it on the hat rack over there, but allude to it slightly. We tend to repeat things that are unresolved. What he says is that um, that there's a tendency within the family to to marry people who fit. But he alludes to his mother being somebody who didn't quite fit. And that's the tragedy of her. She didn't quite fit. OK, so now he's alluding to he's going to break the mold by being with the partner that he's in right now. And yet he talks about the similarities between the two of them. And therefore the tragedy for me seems to be that he is in a pattern here where he is always, and this will sound extraordinarily Freudian, but he's always going to marry his mother because he has to save his mother. He didn't save his mother when he was a child and, and he will place himself in the opportunity 
of saving his mother from the same kind of pain that eventually he would suggest, you know, ran her to her death. It is, um, it is, as he says, history repeating itself, but not quite in the way that he thinks it's repeating itself. History doesn't repeat itself. It rhymes. And the rhyme here is that he's gone for, he, he is destined. We would say in that tragic sense, he is destined to uh, have a relationship with somebody and put them or both of them get into a situation where she will need saving and he'll finally be able to save uh, save his mother. Uh, if that's a possibility, he could turn a, a tragedy into what we call a comedy, uh, something that ends really well. hope it all ends well for them, but at the moment, it seems quite tragic. He has this fatal flaw of needing to save his mother. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right. Um, his illustrators are strong and on point. He uh, still seems very relaxed as he's going through this. We see that eye flutter. I see what you're saying, Greg, about uh, when he's talking about um, the people in the family, the men. But I think that that I think that gets on his nerves because he's supposed to be part of that, but he's not anymore. So maybe something plays. Maybe there's something at play in that as well. Um, but he's very comfortable talking to the camera. He loves that. He's really, because like I said before, since he was a little kid, they've told him exactly what to do and how to do it. It's the perfect upbringing. In a royal family, they, you're trained, literally trained to talk to the camera, how to sit, how to stand, how to talk, where to put your hands, all those things. They teach you all that. So that's why he's so comfortable doing that and the eye he has eye closure when he talks about his mom and i think he's doing that because he's proud of her i think he's proud of, of what she did and um then he says i remember when i realized realized my family was different and we see that really hard chin jut and then a micro expression of anger so i think that i think maybe that bothers him maybe maybe it really does bother him there's a part of that or maybe he's mad at his family for uh, at he, they're not shunning him. He started it. So they're just, I think at this point, when you're out, you're out. So I think, it, I, I think that's, that's what's happened. I think he's mad at him because they're treating him that way. He can't, he doesn't have all the freedoms he used to have. So he moved and he left the country. Um, and while his head is back again, he does that gratuitous pause, which is like a gift to us. So we can see him experience this emotion, give us enough time to let that read and see him going through it and like, Oh, wow. Well, yeah. He's feeling emotion. Um, then his raw, his arms do that roll out forward. That's, that's the most active and, and largest, uh, illustrator we've seen from him so far. Um, and as he talks, he exhales with almost with relief as he finishes that last little, little sentence in his paragraph. That's like, an, a, 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 so he's expressing his emotions as he's saying it, as he's, um, letting that air out as he relaxes or, or blows off steam from that. All right. So I got we good. Just one more point on that, Scott, because he right. does say in that video that his mother, you know, didn't there weren't any lectures on how to be, you know, they weren't taught. She says they weren't taught. But the, but the question is, is how how does any anybody in a family get taught how to be in a family? There are no mm -hmm. lectures. Nobody. My dad and mum didn't give me a lecture. My aunt said right people, there, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do this, do yeah. that. No, it's that's that's not how culture works. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have it, you know, um, our family, sh well, I don't want to be special, uh, but our family didn't have lectures for how to be in the family. No family has lectures. So you don't think they family. taught him? You don't think they, as, uh, as emulation. Emulation. It's like any It's like any culture, you, 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 it's picked up as an undercurrent. You know, you're there. I bet, I bet there's yeah. a PowerPoint somewhere. <laughs> a manual. I think there's Don't a, be a brat. A, sit. <laughs> yeah. I think for so many people in the family, especially obviously the men, there can be a temptation or an urge to marry someone who would fit the mold, as opposed to somebody who you perhaps are destined to to be with. The difference between making decisions with your head or your heart, and. My mum certainly made most of her decisions, if not all of them, from her heart. Do I remember a moment when I suddenly realised that my family was different? <laughs> um, no, I think it's just, I just think it's gradual.
I mean, there's no point that we're all sat down in a classroom and my grandmother stands there with, you know, the long stick in her glass and then everyone else goes, right. So this is what it means to be in the royal family. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.